Hey these smart monkeys, welcome to my channel and if you've been here before, welcome back and thank you for your continued support, I appreciate it. Um, this is my little platform where I turn struggling math students into math masters. I post videos Tuesdays and Thursdays, which you probably know already. <laughs> um, and yeah, so if subscribe and if you want to know when I post any new videos, then turn on the notification button. Um, I also do revision classes, online revision classes before the June exams, um, before the mock exams and before the final exams. So if you're interested in joining those, then please email me. You can email me to mathsmonkeyhelp at gmail.com and I'll send you all the information for those classes. All right, um, this video we are going to be looking at inflation and I'm going to teach you really what inflation actually is, all the different types of calculations that is included in inflation and yeah, sort of how you can go about answering exam questions. All right, so let's do this. So this lesson, like I said, is on inflation and I like to start with making sure that you actually understand what the definition of the topic actually is. So if we look at inflation, what is inflation? Actually, inflation is the average percentage increase of goods and services in one year, right? And inflation works with compound interest. So essentially, a country will have sort of standard prices and then each year that um, those goods and services will increase by a specific percentage and that percentage is known as inflation, right? So there's sort of this average percentage that the country agrees upon on how um, they would increase their prices by, right? Um, what I also want to add to you here is making sure that you understand that um, inflation also refer to the weakening of a currency. Um, in other words, if inflation goes up and if you know the prices of things go up, then that actually means that the value of your money as it goes along comes down. So the value of a hundred rand note last year is going to be less than the value of the hundred rand note this year because everything is more expensive. So just note that those two work hand in hand, right? Then also this works, inflation is is very similar and works on the compound interest um, concept. So if you want to sort of deepen your understanding on inflation, I would suggest that you go over the video where I look into detail on simple interest and compound interest. Okay, so ideally, let's start with the different types of questions you can expect with inflation. So there really is just three types of questions that you can expect. And the one is where in an exam paper, they ask you to add an inflation. So, right. So, that means adding a percentage. So, that's simple. You literally are just going to add a percentage to um, a total value or a price. The second type of question they can ask you, and you'll see that I sort of work through the slides like that. Um, the second type of question is where you have the price and you have to work back. So, let's say some uh, the price of bread... Um, they give you the price this year and then they give you the inflation rate and then they ask you, okay, but what was the price then last year? Okay, so it's working back. So that's the second type of calculation you must be able to do. And then the third one, which is the final one, is where they give you the starting price. So they give the price maybe in 2021 and they give you the price in 2022 and you have to calculate the percentage difference. So those are the three types of calculation. It's adding the inflation rate. It's calculating what was the original price, right, or the price before um, it was increased, and then what is the actual difference in percentage, or what is the actual inflation rate. Okay, so let's look at the first type of example. Number one, it says, a bus ticket from Cape Town to George is 550 Rand in 2020. If the inflation rate from was 9.5 in both 2021 and 2022, determine the price of the bus ticket in 2022. Okay. So, what does this question say? This question is looking at one item, which is a bus ticket, 
and it starts at 550 Rand, right? And we want to calculate the inflation rate so it goes up, it increases by 9.5%. So how do I calculate 9.5%? I say 9.5 divided by 100 times 550, and it gives me my 52 rand and 25 cents. So the price then in 2021 is the 550 plus this increase gives you 602 and 25 cents. So in 2021, this bus ticket is then 602 and 25 cents. Now, and this is where the, the, the compound sort of reasoning comes in, is if we calculate on 22 now, for 2022 now, we're going to take the 602.25 and we're going to calculate 9.5% of that value. Okay, so now we want to find out what is the percentage for the next year. Um, sorry, what was the increase for the next year? So the increase is also 9.5, but now it's 9.5 of this value, of the 2021 value. And that gives us 57.21375. Note, I'm not rounding off because this is not my final answer. So to calculate the price, I go 602, which is the 2021 price, plus the interest, um, the interest, plus the increase, the inflation rate, uh, which was the 57 and all these decimals. And if you add them together, your price then in 2022, which is what the question is asking, is 659 and 46 cents. Okay. So now let's have a look at the third type of, um, the second type of example, right? So the second one is now where we have to calculate the price before the, in the increase, okay? So the price of a laptop in 2022 was 11499 The inflation rate for this laptop was 8% from 2021 to 2022 and 5.3% from 2020 to 2021. Calculate the price of the laptop in 2020. So take note, we are now actually working back in this calculation. So we start off with, in 2022, this was the price, right? And we want to calculate before it increased by 5.3% and 8%, we want to know what was the original price in 2020. Okay, so the way you're going to do this, now how I want you to think about this is... The previous year, in your mind, you will consider as 100%, right? Then, if you add the percentage, the following year will then be the 100% plus that added percentage. So, let me show you what I mean. We are again going to use the LVN method. If you don't know what that is, please have a look at the conversions video or the exchange rate video where I show you in detail how to use this. But essentially, I'm going to have... 2021, which is the previous year, will count as my 100%, right? Then in 2022, it increased by 8%, so my 2022 will be my 108%. Now, don't worry about the equal to signs here, because 100% is not equal to 108%. But I'm trying to just show you this method, um, so that you can sort of use this understanding to do the calculation. So... The second year, so this one now is 2022 is the 108%, right? Because after the 8% eight, eight was added. So if you have these three values, you then now can use the LVN method to do the calculation. So you're going to say the 11,499, anti-clockwise, divide first, then multiply. So you're going to go 11499 divided by 108. Just the 108, not the percentage, right? Then you're going to divide it, then you're going to multiply it by 100. So again, we're just looking at the, the values. And the answer is in 2021, before we added the 8%, this laptop costs 10,647.22 cents. Please take note that most students make a mistake where they want to subtract 8%. Okay, you can't subtract 8% because that 8% was calculated from the original value and not to the new value. And if you don't have the new value, if you don't have the original value, then you can't calculate the 8%. So don't calculate the 8% of the end value and then subtract it because you will get the answer wrong. Okay, now let's have a look. So this is now the price then in 2021. Now we're going to do the same calculation to find out what was the price in 2020. So again, 
the previous year counts as 100%, the following year counts as the 100% plus whatever the inflation rate was. Then the, 20, the, the current year's value then goes under the added the 100 plus whatever the inflation rate was. You're going to place the total of that year underneath that percentage. Again, you're going to work anti-clockwise, dividing first, multiplying, not including the, the percentages in your calculation. And then your answer will be 10,111 and 32 right so the question then asked what was the original value it will be 10111.32 rand in 2020 okay so take note in example one we moved from the from an earlier year to the later year and then in example two we, we moved from the later year now to the earlier year okay earlier years okay so in this example uh, we are now going to look at calculating the inflation rate, which is the actual percentage between the two. So in the, pre in the previous examples, we, had, we were given the percentages across the years, and now we are actually asked to calculate what was the inflation rate. So when a, the question says rate, it means what is the percentage. Okay, so um, the price of one brand of bread... In 2020, 2021, and 2022 was 18 rand 80, 19 rand 95, and 21 rand 80, okay, respectively. Calculate the inflation rate from 2020 to 2021 and 2021 to 2022. So the method that you're going to use here, grade 12, is fairly simple. You, as the numerator, you're going to calculate what is the difference between the two values. So what was the price in 2021? What was the price in 2022? You're going to subtract those two and add that as a numerator. Your denominator will always be the value that came first. So the value from the previous year, which is the 1880. Multiply that by 100 and you will get your percentage, the 6.11%. So from 2020 to 2021, this uh, bread increased by 6.11%. So, if we look at 2022, we're going to do the exact same calculation. We are now going to say 21.80 minus 19.95 as the numerator. Then, in the denominator, you calculate the value that came first. So, it's the value in 2021 multiplied by 100 and your answer will then be 9.27%. Okay. So, in that case, so in this scenario, you'll see that um, the first year... Everything went up by 6.11% of this brand. And then the second, uh, the, in year two, from 2021 to 2022, it went up by 9.27%. Okay, so essentially what we looked at, we looked at in the first example, again, we're going from a previous year and adding the inflation rate to get the end, um, calc to get the end prices. Then in the second example, I showed you how to go from the end prices to get the previous prices. And then in this example, you are given both prices, but you have to now calculate what was the percentage increase between the two. Okay, so that is pretty much how is if inflation rates work. And inflation rate is really just a combination of compound interest. If you understand compound interest and you understand percentages, then this uh, section will be fairly easy for you. Okay, now one more thing I want to go over. And it is how inflation works in graphs. And I want to show this to you because um, I do know that there's certain aspect of this that is very easy. But in this aspect of this that students actually get wrong because, and I'll explain to you what the reasoning is. So let's have a look quickly at the these two graphs. Okay, so. The one graph is looking at the price of bread, right? So in 2008, it's 5 rand 25. 2009, it was 7.85. 2010, it was 7, 7 rand 40. 2011, 8 rand 31. 2012, 8 rand 15. So do you notice here, as we're moving across, this bread increases, increases a little, then increases again, but then in the last one, it decreases. Okay? Now, what we have on the, on the right here is the inflation rate for each year. 
So from 2008 to 2009, so from this to there, right, the bread increased by 36.8%. Now, how did we get this percentage? This inflation rate is how we show, how I showed you in the third example, where you take the difference, put it over the value that came first, multiplied by 100. So that gives you 36 and 80 cents. Now, let's look at 718 to 740. That inflation rate there is 3.10%. So that only went up by 3.10%. Okay. So the, this graph shows the percentages, and this graph, this graph shows the actual prices. Now again, from 740 to 831, again, our increase was now 12.30%. Okay? And again, like we did in example 3, is how we would get these values. You're welcome to check these um, percentages to make sure that you know actually how to do those calculations. Then the last year, note here that this price is actually going down. So if I take this, divide it by the previous year, and put it over the previous year's one, I will get a negative answer. Okay? Why? Because this actually inflated by a negative percentage because it actually went down. Okay? Now, why am I showing this to you? So grade 12s, please take note. Sometimes in an exam, they will give you the inflation rate graph. Now, the inflation rate graph basically says what is the percentage by which everything went up. Now, if they ask, so, so if you look at this, even though the graph is going down, you must understand that the price between these years are still going up. Okay, this graph is going up and down based on the price, but this graph is going up and down based on the inflation rate, right? So, just because this graph is going down for the inflation rate, so it's, it first increased, this price of bread first increased by 36.80%, then it went down to 3.10%, but... The price is still increasing, but it is increasing at a lower rate. And that is why this graph is going down. If this graph is going up, then that still means that it is increasing, but it is increasing by a larger value. So please take note of that. Because sometimes students will see, okay, the question will speak about, you know, They'll ask, oh, because it went from 36.80 to 3.10, does that mean that the price actually went down, right? Or they'll say, okay, Melissa says that the price actually went down. Is this, is this correct? And then you'll have to say, no, it's not, because even though the graph is going down, right, the price is still going up. And the only time the price is actually going down is when it's actually a negative percentage. Okay, I hope that makes sense to you. Anyway, so that's it, great whiles. And if you are writing a test on inflation, good luck. And yeah, and thank you for watching. All right, so there's that video on inflation. Um, if you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, add it in the comment section. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Bye.